All right, the derivatives of inverse trig functions. Now this is definitely an obscure topic that you probably won't see even if you're in an AP class. It seems like in AP classes, they'll do inverse trig functions as integrals. So you'll have to learn how to integrate something that'll turn into an inverse trig function. But you hardly ever have to take the derivative of the inverse trig functions here in the chain rule chapter or really anywhere else in trig. Um, what happens in the integral section of calculus is you just get a lot of obscure formulas and a lot of stuff can't be integrated at all. So they feel like they have to throw a lot of formulas at you. In derivatives and chain rule, it's all about execution. So that's why even pretty hard classes won't touch this. But that said, though, it's really not that hard. So if you do have these in your class, not to worry. Chain rule and derivative formulas are really plug and chug. There's never one you won't be able to do. You just have to keep track of things and don't forget your u primes. So if you look at these formulas, we just got the six inverse trig functions here. And of course, these could also be draw, uh, written as arc. So it could be arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, and so forth. Same rule applies. Arc sine and inverse sine of the negative one, exactly the same thing. So what happens? These look really weird. And I would say that the main, the main thing that a student might get caught off guard by these is that they don't look like what they are. Like the derivative of sine, which is cosine, derivative of cosine was sine. Derivative of tangent has a secant squared in it, which is weird, but at least it's a trig function. But these inverse trig functions, you just get crazy stuff. Where did a square root of 1 minus u squared come from with, an, with a sine? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. And I honestly have no idea where this came from. You just got to know how to use them, and that's all there is to trig, right? So on the bright side, if you do have these in your class, decent chance you'll be able to take them in on a note card. So keep that in mind. They're all pretty similar. They've got ones in them. They've got u squareds in them. But uh, otherwise, just plug and chug. Whatever you see here is your u. That's where you're going to put in place of u in all these formulas. And since they all have u squareds in them, that means you're going to be squaring it. So the inverse sine of x would have an x squared in the denominator under that square root. Inverse sine of 5x squared would have a 25x to the fourth for that u squared. And then, of course, since we are dealing with a chain rule, or really any time you're taking a derivative of anything that has anything besides x right here, you're going to have to use a chain rule. And that's why all these have a u prime upstairs. And as we're used to seeing, some of these have positive u primes and others have negatives. You know how it is with trig functions. Some of them have pluses. Some of them have negatives on the right side. It's kind of half and half. So that's why if you are going to memorize these, be really careful. But like I said, I wouldn't memorize them unless your teacher you have to have a really mean teacher to make you memorize this particular batch of formulas. And this is an absolute value. Um, as usual, I'm not totally sure why it's there. I'm sure it has something to do with things being undefined if it wasn't there or something. Anyway, just throw it in your answer and you'll be okay because these are really plug and chug. All right, so inverse, uh, Have a I just rewrote the formulas up here from the prior page. So let's just try doing a problem key thing with the chain rule always is to identify your u, right? But of course, since we're looking at a trig function, u is just always whatever it's the inverse sine of. So in this case, it's the inverse sine of x squared, which means that must be my u. So when I go to plug and chug, all I'm going to do is just assume that x squared is my u. So derivative of the inverse sine here is u prime. So derivative of, u, of, 2x, of x squared, sorry, is 2x. And then the denominator, we've got square root of 1 minus u squared. But since my u was already x squared, this is x to the fourth. Pretty crazy. But that's all, that's all there is to it. Not too bad, right? All right, next one, inverse cosine. All right, let's go up to our inverse cosine formula. We've got a negative u prime. And of course, my u, once again, is just whatever's behind the inverse cosine, which this time is square root of x. So what's my u prime? Ugh. Well, this is a little bit messier, right? So I'm going to work off the, the work out the u prime off the side. U prime in this one is going to be, well, first of all, our u is just square to x, which is x to the one half. So as you've probably seen by now, derivative of x to the one half is a little bit nasty. It's one half x to the minus one half, which you can just leave like that if you want. Then again, since we're working fractions anyway, let's rewrite that as. 1 over 2 root x. All right, so that's what we're going to plug in for u prime. So when we do an inverse cosine problem, and we got a negative u prime upstairs, that's going to be negative 1. And I'm going to put that 2 root x in the denominator of the giant fraction. So 2 root x. 
and then I got my square root of 1 minus u squared. So u squared is just square root of x squared is just x. All right, and that's not really reducible. Well, just for the heck of it, I guess we could multiply this root x into this other root stuff. So at least we only have one square root downstairs. So we'll have negative 1 over 2 square root of x minus x squared. All right, not too bad. Plug and chuck. Don't forget your u prime, naturally. A couple more, this time with tangent and cotangent. And this one's actually going to be a little bit trickier because we might have a nested chain rule on this last one. Let's see what happens. All right, so first of all, inverse tangent. Now, these formulas are a little bit different from the cosine and, and sine formulas, but they're really just the same to execute. You figure out where your u is, plug and chug. So inverse tangent, that's this formula up here. Our u is obviously the 2x. So u prime is just going to be 2, because the derivative of 2x is 2. And then downstairs, we have 1 plus u squared. So that's the quantity, 2x squared. And the only way to mess this one up is if we don't realize that 2 is also squared. Since that ends up being 2 over 1 plus 4x squared. Not too bad. Now, this should be warming you up for integration because when you integrate, now it turns out if you see something looking like this, that's sort of random and has an x squared downstairs, what you're going to be thinking is, man, maybe that's an inverse trig function because that does come up, especially in AP. You're supposed to know a few of the inverse trig functions. Ask your teacher which ones you're responsible for because, as usual, it seems like usually you don't have to know all of them, just a couple. All right, last one, inverse cotangent. Now this one's a little bit juicier because e to the 3x is kind of its own little chain rule deal. But let's see what happens. So we got inverse cotangent. It's just going to be negative u prime. So this is obviously my u right here. So first of all, I got negative. Then I've got the derivative of u. e to the 3x, what's the derivative of e to the 3x? Well, it's e to the 3x, but then I've got to do chain rule on it because if it was e to the x, the derivative would just be e to the x. But e to the 3x, now I've got to do u prime on this little exponent. So I've got to multiply by 3 because that's the derivative of the exponent. And then downstairs, i got 1 plus u squared again. So e to the 3x squared. So now we just have a little bit of simplification to do. And I can put, move that 3 out front so upstairs. So I've got negative 3 e the 3x. And downstairs, we still have 1. Now, what do I do if I have e to the 3x squared? What does that come out to the exponent? Well, that's really, if you want to work it out, if you're not sure, it's e to the 3x times e to the 3x would just be e to the 3x squared. And since we have matching bases, when we multiply, we add exponents. So that's going to be e to the 3x plus 3x, which is just e to the 6x. And you also could have gotten that just realizing whenever you have something to an exponent and then another set of parentheses and another exponent, you can just multiply the two exponents. So e to the 3x squared is just e to the 2 times 3x, which is e to the 6x. All right, so hopefully that straightens these out for you. Um, like I said, it's just really plug and chug. Your class might be one of the ones that has even more obscure formulas than this. Like even if it's not inverse trig functions, it could be, I don't know, you never know. If you look in the back of your, just find that big formula sheet in your textbook, and you might just find, in the appendix, you might just find page after page of crazy derivative and integration formulas. But they're all the same. If you just make sure, you know, you figure out where your u is, and then realize there's almost definitely going to be a u prime somewhere in that formula, and just plug and chug through it using the chain rule like you're supposed to. I mean, this u prime, that just came from the chain rule. They had to put that in there because they figure, you know, it's not going to be inverse tangent of x, it's going to be inverse tangent of something else. So they just threw the u prime in there so you wouldn't have to worry about remembering the chain rule yourself. And by the way, these things could also pop up in a multiplication form, in a product situation. So for example, if you had had, you were trying to find the derivative of x to the fifth times tan minus 1 of 2x, this is just what we just did, right? But then, of course, now that's multiplied by x to the fifth, Everything we just did right, th right here is just going to be the derivative of this tangent term, inverse tangent term, that you put in the big product formula. So this will just be like one little portion of the work on that problem. But hey, it's just a product formula, no big deal. You have to find the derivative. If you ever find the derivative of inverse tangent of 2x, 
whether it shows up in a product or anywhere else, it's always going to be 2 over 1 plus 4x squared. All right, so hopefully that helps. Remember, no matter how obscure the derivative, you can always find a formula and plug and chug your way through it.